From overalls to Le Mans and chest pains to Cobras, only a fraction of motorsports legend Carroll Shelby's real story is told in Ford vs. Ferrari. You're gonna wanna see this. And there's a lot to tell. Fencing, fighting, torture, revenge. So here with everything you need to know about this larger than life legend that isn't in the film is Marsh vs. Ford vs. Ferrari. Subscribe for more movie content. A very Matt Damon looking Carol Shelby is the heart of the epic true story in Ford vs. Ferrari. But this greatest ever underdog story in racing almost never happened because of Shelby's heart, a detail that barely gets any screen time. So how close did Shelby actually come to death? Well that answers that. What's with the pills he kept taking? Can one man outrun dysentery? I was running. Outclass champagne. So you're telling me there's a chance. And out chili chilies. Chili baby back What else is Ford versus Ferrari not telling us about Carol Shelby? Let's find out in six elements. First, some backstory. It's the early 60s. A Russian's already been floating in space, the Beatles want to hold your hand, and if you're Ferrari, you're totally broke. Maybe he bought too many copies of Meet the Beatles. Enter Henry Ford Jr. Don't call me Junior. Enter Henry Ford II to save the day and buy the bankrupt sports car company with an offer Enzo Ferrari couldn't refuse. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. But he did. At the last minute, Ferrari not only backs out of the deal, but insults Ford's company, his cars, his factory, and, rumor has it, the American automobile mogul personally. He called you fat, sir. Furious and eager for revenge, Hank the Deuce drops a whopping $25 million, plus thousands of engineering man hours, and untold engineering woman hours, to avenge his company, his family name, My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father, prepare to die. And his doughboy frame to challenge Ferrari at an event Ferrari had dominated for years. We're gonna bury Ferrari at Le Mans. The 24 Hours of Le Mans Endurance Race, the premier auto racing event for manufacturers to showcase their brands to the entire world. The Homer. Put their reputation on the line and prove who is the greatest. Enter Texan Carol Shelby, who rides into town like a hired gun. Any one of you lily-livered, bow-legged varmints care to slap leather with me? To help Ford dethrone the house of the prancing pony at Le Mans. My name's Carol Shelby, and performance is my business. But we have to pause for a moment, and actually rewind. Because before any of this Ford versus Ferrari stuff, Shelby was very near death. Back in the day, Shelby was an incredible racer himself. In fact, he finished in first at Le Mans in 1959, driving an Aston Martin DBR1. To that I say, all right, all right, all right. It was the only time in a span of eight years Ferrari didn't finish first. But the promising young racer had lived with severe chest pain nearly his whole life. You see, a healthy heart will beat about 80 times per minute when someone is at rest, sometimes even slower, like 60 or 50 beats per minute. But Shelby's ticker raced at 130 beats per minute while he was at rest. The blood flowing through his arteries was restricted, which not only meant the Texan's heart was working two or three times as hard just to keep him alive, but he was enduring incredible chest pain on a daily basis. What goes up must come down! To offset this, Shelby popped nitroglycerin pills like Molly. Whoa, 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 Molly! These pills relaxed and widened his arteries and kept his heart from pumping so furiously. Both of his parents had died from heart problems, and for Shelby, things were only getting worse. Cause you had a bad he once famously lost a race, finishing second, after having to slow down to open a bottle of pills. Well, Billy, I had to get my uniform and get a nitroglycerin pill because my heart was hurting. Later, he'd drive with these same pills under his tongue to keep the pain at bay. Which brings us to the start of our movie. Daryl Shelby, I help you? The Ico Ford Motor. Where a doctor warns the young Texan. Oh, hold on, it's my cardiologist. That racing is far too dangerous for him. In fact, Carol Shelby's given just five years to live. We've got five years 
The nitroglycerin pills he's taking aren't enough to keep his heart condition in check, or even keep him alive. Shelby is faced with a sobering decision. Either permanently retire from race car driving, or chase the checkered flag on that big old racetrack in the sky. Thankfully for all of us, except for Ferrari, history had bigger plans for Carroll Shelby. Not only did he outlive that initial five-year diagnosis by nearly 50 years, he went on to develop the GT40, and with the help of Hank the Deuce and the legendary Ken Miles, Coming up is Ken Miles, one of the best sport car drivers in America. Thoroughly wiped Ferrari off the podium at Le Mans for the next four years in a row and completely flushed their winning streak for good. But wait, there's more. But I'm not done yet. But wait, you can also get ramen nibbles with my favorite party recipes. Shelby himself would get married seven times, including to models and actresses, but never to Molly Ringwald. Shut up. Develop iconic sports cars and performance versions of dozens of American muscle cars, lead safaris for a decade in Africa, start a charity to help fund heart transplants, and literally invent the chili cook-off. Like, for real, he actually did that too. Carol Shelby, the original Texas brand chili mix. About the tastiest bowl of red you ever eat. But there's still more. That first place finish at Le Mans behind the wheel in 1959, Shelby won it suffering from dysentery. Yes, that dysentery, and he hadn't eaten in 24 hours. Ever seen a champagne victory spray? Shelby invented that first. Ever eaten at a Chili's restaurant? You can thank or blame Shelby for that too. His son-in-law founded the chain whose name was inspired by Shelby's chili cook-offs. And ever heard of a little video game called Space Invaders? Shelby probably would have gotten around to inventing that too if he didn't have to wait around so long for chips and salsa refills at Chili's. Come on, who's with me? Getting back to the man's ticker, it took more than 30 surgeries, 12 bypasses, and even a heart transplant to keep him going. But none of what he accomplished inside and outside the motorsports world would have happened if this Texas man's man with a life-threatening heart condition at a very young age didn't know when to hold him, when to fold him. Everything you do at the poker table conveys information. And know when to, I don't know, completely revolutionize the entire automobile industry by practically single-handedly pioneering the American muscle car. Complete with fat tires, loud engines, dual exhaust, plenty of buff ponies. Shout out to our boy James Pumphrey. Cut out the middleman. Great job, boss. And unbelievable speed. And that's the reason we went and uh, uh, went to Le Mans and won in 66. If you like what you saw here, help us out by hitting that subscribe button. More of that, please. Or leave a comment below. <coughs> What's your all-time favorite Shelby vehicle? What would you do if you only had five years to live? What's your brand of chili? And is it just us or is Molly Ringwald due for a comeback? Oh, thank you. Here are more videos you're sure to love. Thank you for watching, and remember... I was born ready, Mr. Shelby. Hit it. If this were a beauty pageant, we just lost. Looks hard, everything. There's a lot of designing, testing, and trial runs. Oh, Motor racing is that way. It's a rich mixture of heartache and joy.